city now is raining heavily and there's even some thunder. In other words, Sven's so mud. Okay, I'll go inside instead. I think this is better. Um, I have to say I like Suri Summer though, because now I can sit inside learning languages without any bad conscience, um, which is great. And I can also take the opportunity to teach you some Swedish if you want. And today I'm going to, to teach you some words uh, that are quite small and they don't have a... Well, they don't mean much on their own. Uh, but they are used in sentences to convey a certain meaning or to sort of add a certain uh, level of certainty or uncertainty to the sentence. Väl, nog, ju, då, jo. Okay, let's start with the word väl. In order to explain what it means, I have to um, have it in a sentence. So here I have a sentence with the word väl. So, han är hemma i morgon. That's a statement. Han är hemma i morgon. He is at home uh, tomorrow. So, that means not more or less than, okay, he, he will be at home tomorrow. Um, and then if you put the word väl in here, then it suddenly becomes a question. Han är väl hemma i morgon. Han är väl hemma imorgon? It means more than is he home tomorrow or, or not? It's, it's not like um, a question just whether he's at home or not, like that. Because the person asking this person always assumes that he, he is at home tomorrow. Uh, but uh, the person is somewhat uncertain and want to uh, have this confirmed, han är väl hemma imorgon, that means, okay, I, I think he said he's, he, he would be home tomorrow um, and that is very important because I need to speak to, to him, uh, so I hope he is, he is at home tomorrow, isn't he? Han är väl hemma imorgon. So, if you have a sentence, a statement, um, this is so. And then if you want to make it a question and a sort of um, a question like you think it is that way and you hope that it is that way but you want to have it um, sort of reassured, then you just put well after the predicate. Han är väl hemma imorgon. Here nog is put in the exact same place in the sentence. Han är hemma imorgon. And then instead of väl, we, we put nog. <clears throat> so if you put nog in the sentence, then it means like probably. He is probably at home tomorrow. Uh, or he is... Mm, um, yeah, so you, you see, it's a little different. This is, this is more a statement and this is more a question. Han är väl hemma imorgon? No, han är nog hemma imorgon. I think the G in the end is quite mute. Just like in, in jag, we often say ja. And I think here, um, I, I think in this case you often say like, uh, han är nog hemma imorgon. You just say no, instead of nog. Han är nog hemma imorgon, han är nog hemma imorgon. And then we have the, the word ju. If you already speak German, you will recognize this as the, the German word ja, uh, as in um, but it is yet to house sentence. One thing that is different in, in the last sentence is that um, in this last sentence there's um, much more certainty than in, in the other two. And it's also slightly surprised, like, oh my god, it is at home tomorrow. Han är ju hemma imorgon. Agree with other speakers, so you, you want to, instead of reassure yourself that it is at home tomorrow, you want to. Uh, make this other person understand that he is at home tomorrow and you also think that he should already know this. Han är väl hemma imorgon? Han är nog hemma imorgon? So if you learn to recognize these words, you'll add some more nuances into your uh, comprehension of Swedish. Då, and that means then, 
and when it's used as yes in in this case uh, it's more do yes it becomes a short vowel what are you up to then what are you up to then you can say vad håller du på med då uh, what are you up to then or varför varför gör du så då why are you doing like that then so you say then in the end då and you can hear when I pronounce this fast, the D becomes almost like an R. I don't know why that ha that happens. I think it's just some sort of laziness in pronouncing things that makes the D sound like an R. Vad håller du på med då? Varför gör du så där då? It can also be used in another way in questions, and here it's actually stressed, and therefore it isn't shortened, so it's då. And that is when you say uh, a single question word. Not if you say a, like, a sentence with a, with a question word, like this sentence. You have the question, question word vad. Um, the question word is in the sentence, and here you can't use this word. But if, if va, vad is on its own, or varför it's on its own, it's common to put då after it. So if you just want to ask where, who are you coming with us? Where? When? Um, you can say, vad då? Where? Vad då? Or, hur då? How? Or, perhaps, när då? When? Varför då? Why? Actually, you can put an, an additional då to this sentence, but then it becomes the, th the shortened version of it. Uh, so actually, you can say, Varför då då? Varför då då? So it also becomes this slightly rification of the D. Varför då då? Are you coming? Ja, men när, när då då? If someone says a negative statement in German, like it's not like this, and then the other person wants to say, well actually, it is like this, then he often says, doch. Doch, is is ja so. And in Swedish, the word you use in, in this case is jo. Like if I say, uh, han kommer in, han är inte, han, han är inte hemma imorgon. Han är inte hemma imorgon. And then, I know that he is at home tomorrow, so I say, jo. Jo, he, he is at home tomorrow. And then I have uh, one more thing that is also connected to this, more to the spoken language than to the written. Okay, actually you don't very often say ja in Swedish, it's not very common. Um, because often you, you instead say it like a, a two syllable word, <clears throat> so you add an, an extra syllable. And how you stress the syllable can convey what you really mean with your ja. So, for instance, if I ask you something, uh, like a yes or no question, and I want a reply, and, and you say yes, then you perhaps wouldn't say ja, uh, but instead you would say ja, so you see here it's, like, I know I've only written how it's pronounced, not how it's spelt, because it's, it's often spelt like ja, but here you see two a's, so you stress the first one, ja, like, okay, <laughs> now it's very sort of exaggerated, but okay, were you at home yesterday, yes or no, and then you would say, ja, ja, jag var hemma, ja, and sometimes you, you don't say the j, you just say, ja, ja, um, if you want to say like, oh, I see, like if I give you some new information and, and you want to confirm that you have sort of um, received the information, like I tell you it was raining yesterday, you can say jaha, or you can also say aha, and and this means like oh I see, aha, and then you stress the last syllable instead. The reply to the yes or no question, ah, ja, and I see, 
is aha. And this is also uh, with the word nej, because we don't often say like nej. Uh, this is the same actually. If you the reply to a yes or no question, um, did it rain yesterday? And you want to say no, it didn't. You can say nej. Nej. And then you also stress the, the first syllable. Nej. Nej, det regnade inte igår. Um, like, if I tell you a negative statement, like, uh, it didn't rain yesterday, and you want to say, oh, oh I see, then you can say, nej. And this is also, you stress the last syllable instead, and you have this H. Nej. Jaha. If you see someone, a Swedish person, who's talking on the phone, and they say, like, aha. Nej. Jaha. Nej. Jaha, nähä, jaha, nähä, ja, aha. Then you know that they are talking to someone who is telling them something. But if they say, a, ah, nej, nej, ja, ah, then you know that they are they are being asked questions, and they reply either with yes or no to this yes or no questions. Um, so. That's everything for today. I hope to see you in the next video. Um, so, vi ses. Um, vi ses. Och ha det så bra tills dess.